All right, we are gonna get started here. Once again, thank you everybody for joining us for this exciting webinar. You know, I think many of us agree that the past few months have been a little different uh, than what we've typically experienced in life before. And what we've seen happening is a lot of people, uh, if they weren't going into an office, they were open, able to open the computer, turn it on and then start working. And really what we've seen over the past six, seven months is this transition from people going into an office to people being able to work from anywhere. I know at ECI Development, we have seen that as well. We had most of our staff in the countries where we're working, um, but ultimately folks ended up all over, primarily the Americas, but uh, we did have folks um, in Portugal as well. But what we were able to see is that we were still able to be efficient as a team. And over the past six, seven months that we've been dialoguing with a lot of you, what we've also realized is that many of you are also looking for a way to digitize your business. We recently did a big promotion for one of our tiny home projects, Ava in Nicaragua, which is really geared towards this digital nomad community. And we had many people who are writing in asking us, hey, do you know how I can get a job in Nicaragua? Or I'm looking to move to Belize, but I still need an income. And we kept hearing this over and over and over. And you know, while we don't necessarily have jobs that we can be offering to everybody, and you, know, you do need to get work permits if you wanna be working in that country for a local company, what we realized is there are many ways for you to continue earning income. You don't have to necessarily work for us, but you can do so from your computer, either start your own business, find a business where you're able to earn that income from. So what we're gonna do today is talk about a few awesome places for you to become a digital nomad. And then from there, we've invited two very special guests to join us as well, who are business consultants in this field. They can help you digitize your business, get to that next step, help you to really live that dream of being able to live overseas, or at least spend time overseas and in other countries. So before we get started here, we're going to do a quick introduction of our hosts. My name is Rachel Jensen. I'm the Vice President of Sales and Marketing for ECI Development. Originally from New York, Belize is now home for me, living and working in Belize. Um, but you know, in, in over the, the course of these last eight years, a lot of uh, what my job consists of is traveling and going to other places and you know, still working while being there. And what we realize is as long as you're able to get really great internet, get cell phone service, you're able to continue with that job that you're doing. And we've definitely been able to do that within ECI, but also personally, I've you know, been able to find that sort of experience. And I think that it's critical, and especially in the role I'm in where I'm traveling all the time to be able to open up a computer. Now we understand not everybody uh, may have the opportunity to work for another company. And that's why I'm really excited about this specific webinar to help you find a way to digitize your business or a hobby or interest that you have. Uh, with us, we also have Ivan. Ivan, why don't you unmute yourself and tell us a little bit more about you? Hi, thanks, Rachel. Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for being on. As Rachel mentioned, my name is Ivan, and I am usually on the behind the scenes portion of these webinars, answering a lot of your questions. Um, but today I decided to be uh, on this webinar because it is a very important topic, as Rachel mentioned. Uh, I personally have worked remotely for several years now, and the freedom that comes with that uh, is, is very uplifting. It's very inspiring to you to continue to uh, produce your best work. And in this case, when we're talking to you business owners that are able to move their business online and, and work from anywhere, um, we're happy to be able to provide that freedom or provide at least the, uh, the options for you to look into obtaining that kind of freedom. So happy to be here and I look forward to liaising with everybody else. Uh, and with me, I have my colleague, Ali Rodriguez as well. Ali, why don't you say hello to everyone? Hello, everyone. Thank you, Ivan, for, for throwing that on over to me. As you can see, my name is Ali Rodriguez. I am the Referral Network Director for ECI Development, working, living, and resident of Belize. Um, and as Rachel mentioned, once COVID hit, we kind of all ended up in, in different directions and places. And, and my personal experience with that uh, took me from a five-day vacation to Roatan, uh, which turned into five months of learning to to work <laughs> from Roatan. So not only did the program maintain, but it also grew. Um, so as long as you are able to, like Rachel mentioned, 
have a Wi-Fi connection, still be able to connect with the people that you are working for and working with, you can continue to grow and, and develop your business. So um, I'll be speaking with you guys some more about uh, my experience and, and why Belize. So thank you guys. Fantastic. Well, we're going to get started here. So I think many of you know, uh, we are ECI development. We're a real estate development company. And while our core competency is not helping you digitize your business, that's why we bring the experts in. What we have been doing a very great job at is housing the people who are looking to relocate overseas, uh, whether you're looking from a ownership perspective, a long-term rental perspective, or even weekly, if you want to come down for a few weeks and check out the land. We have many different options for folks who are looking to do just that. Uh, our tiny home communities we found uh, really are catering well to the digital nomad group. There's a third spaces, areas for people to come together, um, but of course not limited to those options. But we've been very good at what we're doing. We've been in the business for over 20 years at this point. And I'd say, you know, it's really been pretty recently that this buzzword of digital nomad, you know, somebody who's able to pick up their computer and work anywhere, work digitally, has become more and more well known. And I think as more of the countries we're working in has more developed infrastructure, you have the fiber optics internet, you have the high speed, you're able to do things efficiently, we are finding that more people are looking to relocate. And there are many reasons why people are looking to relocate and we're going to cover those. But we're going to also talk about three top countries where people are looking right now um, to become a digital nomad. They all have different reasons as to why people are going there. Belize, for example, English is the official language. In Nicaragua, the cost of living is very, very affordable, especially compared to Costa Rica, which is the neighboring country. And then Panama, uh, it has a very strong international presence. And it's also um, has a very strong economy, which a lot of us like when we're looking at living in another country. There's the stability there. But a quick overview of why people are buying property overseas or why people are owning property overseas or even why people are going overseas generally. One is there's this global diversification concept where you're protecting your portfolio and perhaps you're looking at ownership of real estate overseas primarily as an investment. And then maybe you'll come down and visit for a month or two, open up your laptop, do what you need to do, and then rent it out the other times of the year. You're really protecting your portfolio, adding in that country diversification. Um, and then of course that investment opportunity we just alluded to, being able to invest in another country is really those two work together there, protect, uh, global diversification and the investment opportunity. And depending on the country that you're looking in, some countries may have better investment opportunities than other, whether you're looking for appreciation, you're looking for that income that's coming in. Um, depending on the country you're in and depending on your home country, there are tax advantages. I'm not an accountant, I'm not a CPA. I can't give you a list of what this can and can't do for your taxes. Uh, but what I would certainly recommend is when you're chatting with your consultants or your, your business consultants, get a little bit more understanding of what, what they're doing and you know what they recommend. Ultimately, I would always recommend though you talk to your CPA and attorney. Um, in addition to that, there's a better quality of life. And this is really one of the core reasons that we're seeing a lot of people are making this transition of you know, leaving their home country or leaving where they're currently living and moving somewhere else, moving overseas, especially in the area where we work, we're in Central America, your dollar or your whatever currency you're using, your euro, your dollar goes a lot further. The cost of living is a fraction of what you're seeing in more of these developed countries. And it really enhances your quality of life. And so a lot of people, they're adventurous. They want to go live in Nicaragua for two months. They want to spend half a year in Panama. They want to relocate entirely to Belize like Ali has. And there you are still able to find opportunities. And I think, you know, there are many of us who don't necessarily have the means or aren't able to retire, quote unquote, and do still need to get that income in. And again, the higher quality of life here are just some examples of costs that made service for a month, $160. Um, again, like, like, you know, think about that. You can sit there in your hammock doing your work, have your house cleaned for $160 a month. It is truly, truly incredible. But that also gives you more time to do what you enjoy, more time to adventure around the country, more time to sit in that hammock or talk to the other digital nomads and really enhance that quality of life 
that you're looking for. And of course, healthcare. I mean, this is a big reason why people are relocating. I don't know, Kathy, if you're on, but Kathy and I were chatting yesterday. She's from the UK. And we were talking about healthcare. And in a lot of these countries, there is really great healthcare. And she wanted you know, to find a place that was better than what she was getting in the UK. Panama, Nicaragua, they both have JCI accredited hospitals, hospitals that meet international standards. She's getting great care. You're also paying a fraction of what you'd be paying uh, in a lot of countries. And a lot of us like that. We like that sort of comfort of being able to know that we can live very, very well for a fraction of what we're currently paying. So as you are considering your new life abroad, there are some things for you to bear in mind is do you want to rent or own? If owning, do you need financing? And does that country have financing? Another consideration for you is how far are you from your home? Do you um, want to add an hour? Do you want to be an hour away or do you want to be a day away? And that's something important for you to be considering as well. The third one here is do you want to be fully immersed in the local culture or amongst expats? Again, these are things that you may not necessarily be thinking about when you're thinking about spending time overseas, but you do need to, of course, keep in the back of your mind. And then I've spoken to a lot of families that have children that will be moving with them. So are you moving with those children? And if so, what sort of school do you want them in? Are you looking to homeschool them? Do you want to put them in an international school? Do you want to put them in a local school? Uh, so these are really important considerations for you. Uh, and one that's not on here, and you know, I feel like I don't even need to talk about it because all of our properties have it, but is the fact that is there strong internet? Is there great connectivity to where you're going to be? And especially if you're looking in developed countries, you do need to make sure that you have that fiber optics like we have on the island and like we have at Grand Pacifica, um, or do you need to go somewhere different? So again, these are little things that really make a big difference at the end of the day. But you know, do you want to rent or own? Do you need financing? How far do you want to be or how close do you want to be from your home country? Um, what sort of experience are you looking for when you're spending time in another country? And the reality is we don't know what we don't know. Forget what you think you know. And this is, you know, I think really true for a lot of folks who are looking to relocate overseas. And if you haven't had the chance to spend time in that country where you're looking at, um, just you know, put aside those expectations, put aside any preconceived notions that you have, and go into this adventure with an open mind. And that's how I'm going to refer to it as an adventure. We don't know what we don't know, but as long as you're opening your mind, I think you will have a very interesting and fun experience. But as you're looking at property overseas, um, you know, one of the resources that we have for you is a global uh, property resource kit. And the Global Property Resource Kit is a document, a white paper that contains the 15 critical questions when looking at property overseas. Uh, we uncover three basic principles and in turn have about 15 questions that you have to ask. You really should be asking when looking at property overseas. If you want that guide, just email us uh, right now, guide, G-U-I-D-E, to info at ecidevelopment.com, info at ecidevelopment.com, and our team will get that over to you. But this is a really handy white paper for anybody who's looking at ownership of real estate overseas. Perhaps you've never purchased real estate in another country. Maybe you have, but you didn't ask those questions. Do We do highly recommend that you ask for that. And then last, um, we're going to get started in just a, a couple of minutes here. But what I do also want to mention is when you are planning to relocate to another country, um, you know, you have to understand what kind of visa you're coming in on. Are you going in as a tourist visa? That gives you the right to be in that country. If you're a digital nomad, typically you can open up your computer. You can stay there for as long as that tourist visa is good for. And then you either restamp it if you want to extend it or they tell you that you need to leave. Um, all countries have different options. We'll talk about a couple of the ones that we talked about before so you can see what that looks like. The next step is a residency. It's essentially a green card. It gives you access full time to live in that country. Um, and while some countries have restrictions as to how long that visa is good for, some are permanent, like Panama, you have that residency for life. Now, if you're, I'm gonna, and then citizenship, and then I'm gonna take a step back. But citizenship is essentially a passport. And that will give you access to come in and out of the country with that document. And typically you receive a passport one of two ways, time, so you wait X amount of years after getting residency, or you pay a substantial amount for it. So just depending on what your ultimate goal is will depend on what path you take. Now, I also wanna mention the working situation with these different visas. Typically as a tourist visa, you cannot work 
for a local company in that country. So if you're going to Belize, you come in as a tourist, you are not able to work um, for a Belizean company, but you can open up your computer, do whatever you're doing as you're hanging out there in the beach on your digital company. If you're a resident, that gives you access to work for a local company and citizenship gives you access to work for a local company as well. Um, the one other consideration I do wanna make, I didn't have it written down, is if you're planning to work for a local company, just bear in mind that a lot of the times the pay is not comparable necessarily to what you'd be getting in North America. I know we had a lot of North Americans on the line, um, but you know, North America tends to pay pretty well. Um, and in, in Latin America or in other places, just don't expect the pay to be the same. Um, I know I had a fellow who was a, a truck driver and he was in the States and he was asking about truck driving in Nicaragua. And when I told him the, the salary for that, he goes, I don't want to do that. So you just kind of have to understand that there are going to be differences there. And that's why we think that this concept is probably going to be the most lucrative of digitizing your business, doing what you can overseas. We're gonna go through this a little bit more at the end, but there are three top residency programs that we would recommend for the three countries, Belize, Nicaragua, Panama, but we will certainly go through that uh, at the end of the presentation here. So with that, what I'm going to do is invite our first guest, Glenn Carriage, to give us an overview of his service. And you know, Glenn got introduced to ECI about a year and a half ago. I think he was doing some Googling online, came across my cub, our CEO, and said, I really like what you guys are doing generally. Do you want to hire me? And at that point, uh, we didn't have any positions that were open. Um, but then a couple of months later, Glenn came back to us and said, hey, I'm personally in the process of looking to eventually move overseas, maybe move to Belize. Um, and I'm in the process of you know, creating some online companies. And I want to help people do the same. Um, would you be interested in learning more about what I'm doing? And as we were having that conversation and more of you were reaching out to us about jobs and hiring you or how to help you set up a business, we said there are some really, really great synergies here. So with that, Glenn, what I'm going to let you do is take over here. You should be able to share your screen and, uh, okay. and then we'll get started. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for the intro and uh, welcome everyone. Uh, great to be on here. And, and Rachel's already touched on so many of the important points here. Uh, and uh, yes, I am on the same journey as many of you are about to start. And so as a, a business planner, uh, it's, it's my uh, exciting uh, opportunity to kind of work with you on the move and one of the things about moving uh, uh, offshore is is your landing space and that's really why ACI kind of came to my uh, attention because you've got communities that are already set up for a digital nomad for for online worker um, a digital remote worker uh, and the internet which has been mentioned several times already of course is essential and that's something that ECI have uh, taken into account now it's not to say there's not many other places in the world you can go to but but uh, i i'm really comfortable in in working with eci to uh, to support their communities so uh um, and, and it's just a scoop around this screen uh, there's me in the bottom left corner uh, you'll see that uh, the eci communities at the top left and uh, that little uh, kind of qr box in the bottom right that's one of the newest kind of gadgets if you've been a attending restaurants recently, you'll know that uh, that's a scanner. So you can scan it with your uh, iPhone or smartphone and that'll take you straight to the, uh, the internet address. And that particular one takes you to my website, The Expert Planner. Okay. So uh, I'm really, I'm looking at her target audience, two types, uh, and that's not to say they're limited, but the, the, the people that I'm mostly uh, in tune with is this first group, and that's late, late baby boomers, and we're still working, uh, still at their desk, but we have found recently uh, that we have new luxury of being able to work from our desk uh, anywhere. Right now I'm temporarily on the uh, west coast in Vancouver, uh, uh, but my normal place is Ottawa, uh, but this uh, working from my desk remotely is just driving so many people to new opportunities. And so, uh, I guess basically, uh, like you, I'm looking to escape the craziness. I, I live in Ottawa, so I'm looking to escape the long, cold winters one day. And uh, I want to get away from some of those uncertainties, uh, the economic side. And certainly, I'm looking for somewhere warmer and uh, uh, you know, lower cost of living. And uh, I'm just looking for how to make that happen. 
Uh, the second audi audience uh, is the retirees that uh, are ready to move offshore and they want to make their dollar stretch further. Uh, and, and as uh, Rachel mentioned, healthcare is a, a key component of that. Um, but also, I would like to say that I sense that there's additional requirements why people who are retiring, about to retire, already retired, might also want to do an on online business. And, and that's really to do with an active intellectual lifestyle or, or to add purpose, or even if it's an interest and, or hobby they want to pursue. You have to have an online presence, and that can be challenging. So we're going to go into a little bit of that uh, today. Uh, what we uh, all really have in common is uh, we want to uh, uh, look for our dollars to stretch further. We, uh, we've seen earlier from Rachel's slides that uh, we can make uh, the same dollars go a lot further. Uh, almost certainly all of the properties are in beautiful locations in warm places. Um, for some of us uh, who have uh, an asset, it is a chance to uh, kind of uh, release and reinvest that equity. Many of us are asset rich, but cash poor. So we have uh, equity tied up in, in properties that are uh, increasing in value, but on a month to month basis, we're often finding ourselves stretched. And so this is one of those ways to kind of break the back of that cycle. And, uh, and as already mentioned by Rachel, um, these places you can work online so you don't need to have specialist visa requirements. Your digital business is elsewhere from the offshore location. And I think the key thing is uh, income levels and the hours you want to work is all about you and what suits you as a person. And everyone is absolutely unique in that respect. Um, so, I mean, this should, this should speak to many of you. Uh, the gig economy that's the kind of freelance uh, and when you start looking at online business you'll see that used often um, and you'll see all sorts of sites that cater to people to do different things online remote working and there are so many opportunities um, and we won't go into them today but but just to say that um, I think that everybody is unique you all have different talents and when you put your mind to what you might want to do online that's what I'm there to do, to take you through that journey. And, uh, and then we also talk about being uh, practical and pragmatic about that, because it takes time and, and it takes energy. But if you're really passionate about doing something, then, then something will happen. It's just a journey we have to walk together. And it's very bewildering, but, uh, but it's a journey we can take. And, and also just to say that some of you might already have experience of working online and it is not for any, everyone. Some people do not thrive working from home. Um, what I can say is some of the communities that ECI have, uh, Rachel mentioned earlier, there are spaces where you can uh, go to to be a, a kind of a, a business hub, uh, a separate from your home, because working from home is not always practical or the best thing for everyone. Um, and, I, and I think here, uh, the point I want to make on this slide is that uh, there's a very important fact here. Many of you, if you are a late boomer, would have already worked 30, 35 plus years, but you mustn't I would say let your career define who you are as a person. You have strengths and abilities and innate skills and talents that you, we're going to tease out through this journey. And they may be in fact entirely different to what you did or that working career. Might be the same, might not. Um, so, so that's an interesting point because you are not defined by what you did through the sum of your corporate working life. And so uh, the journey we're going to take is looking at core strengths and talents and, uh, and then what are your uh, requirements uh, going forward. So, so the business planner, that's, that's why I step in. We basically set up a, a conversation. Uh, I talk you through it. I challenge you. We I use me as a sounding board. You speak about your ideas. We throw away, throw around a few ideas and we actually come up with a high level plan and we record that. That's your uh, kind of first gate. What you do from there is to go through, forward with that plan, develop it, and then to start making things happen. Sounds easy, but it's actually, it requires a, a little bit of forethought. And, and really just to say, here, here's a number of uh, reasons for, for wanting to get from here. And I, I put this slide in because it's important to remember what our pre present circumstances are. 
because that's your driver for change. This is where your passion is coming from. This is why you want to make the move because you're either in a cold place, a busy place, a stressful place, and you really want to just enjoy uh, what life has to offer. And you're looking for a, a way to make that happen. And, and to really moving to an Eastside community gives you all of that. And, and I think the key thing to address here is the work-life balance. Rachel alluded to that earlier. And um, we have to realign ourselves to remember that work is an enabler. And uh, if many of you are working 40, 50, 60 hours a week, uh, that's got to be avoided at all costs uh, because uh, you're, you're living to work and not working uh, to live. So uh, let, let's address that as part of this move. So uh, as we go through this uh, business planning workshop, that's the process. It's a, it's a two hour workshop and we cover a number of prop, uh, uh, subjects. Uh, and the first one is really all about you. What do you want to do? What's your passion? Where are your strengths? And where would you, where do you think you'd like to get to? I'm going to zip through these uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll take any questions later. Uh, so then we have to move on to what it is you're going to be uh, uh, offering a product or a service. Very often it's a service digitally. And uh, what is that going to be? You need to be able to put a, a description to that and to talk about the rationale and why you are going to go down that particular road with that particular service or product. Uh, then you've got to move on obviously to the customers and um, everyone will have some sort of a customer base, people that you know will want the services or products you're, you're going to provide. And of course the demographics of that could be very interesting, the culture, the age group and so on. Um, and then staying with customers, you, know, you kind of have to ask yourself why, why would they want what I have to offer. Sometimes it's very obvious and sometimes it's maybe not so obvious, but that's a really important question to ask yourself because that really points to unique or key selling points uh, that you're going to bring out on the uh, high level business plan. Um, the next thing while we're still on customers, you can see it's a pretty important topic. Uh, you, you have to identify uh, the benefits. So you have this product or service, you recognize you have a customer base and why will they want your uh, your product and more importantly these days because there are many many people setting up online businesses uh, not all things are equal so what makes what you're offering better uh, is it more focused more detailed is it packaged and delivered better and ultimately what's the value proposition and does it meet the competition and you kind of kind of have to have a feel for that and do some research around that and we'll touch on that as part of the workshop as well uh, and then as the final part of customers is okay so uh, how are we going to reach out? And, and I, I reckon this is a challenging place for me. Uh, we can all have an online presence, social media, we have Facebook and LinkedIn and so on. But actually, when you start to look at how to reach a number of people and how to get your brand out there and do some kind of online presence and advertising, uh, it, it actually is very challenging. So this is an area we spend quite a lot of time on. When we, uh, when we get to this piece of the workshop. It takes some real sort of thoughtfulness and, and energy to complete this, but it's well worth the effort. And, and it's, um, we might find we actually have to get some support and that becomes part of your plan as well because we're not all good at, at managing SEO, search engine optimization and, and how to reach a, and a larger number of people, a large audience. Um, and then we actually get to uh, back to the products or service. How are we going to, uh, to, to put that together? If you need special software licensing or special technology or capability to, to get into that service and offer it, great. You'll need to make sure you have that identified. Do you need special training? Will you have to go on a training course, et cetera? All of that needs to be just kind of factored in because that's part of your plan from here to as part of your journey. And then uh, we come to the point of uh, really, what does this all mean? If you're a retiree and you want to kind of add 500 US dollars a month to your budget to live comfortably, have a little kind of uh, a piece of revenue on, a, on the side to enjoy life, fine. But, but if you're looking for something much, uh, much greater, then, then you have to think bigger and you have to adjust your plans accordingly. But, but really this is very unique, only you can decide what makes you comfortable in terms of your needs for this online business. 
Uh, and then, of course, the, the other side of the coin is, is what are your costs going to be? Um, there will be some startup costs, yes. You, if you're going to create an online uh, course, there's some cost time as well, opportunity cost. Uh, and uh, you need to just identify what that is. If you're producing something and then sending it off overseas, then there are uh, all sorts of associated costs and complexities and policies and rules to factor in as well. And so we'll cover that as well. It's, it's uh, quite a wide topic. And then really last but not least, what are the main risks? Let's identify them right from the get go. Uh, we identified probability, how likely are they to happen? What's the impact if they happen? And how can we mitigate against them? What's our plan gonna be if they happen? And we also talk about a financial buffer, a kind of contingency. Uh, you know, how, how much do you need to have in your little uh, safe uh, box, which you can rely on if, if, uh, you know, if something goes badly wrong? And uh, really, we also have to think about the backup plan. Let's stay pragmatic. If things really don't go to plan, what is your next step? And there is always a next step, and it's not always a bad thing. It's just sensible to have that in your back pocket as well. So uh, really, the, uh, uh, the business canvas is a summary, a couple of pages, but very heavily bulletized, where I'm taking note of what you're telling me and we're speaking about, and then I'll complete that and send it to you and say, this captures the conversation we just had, this two hours. This encapsulates your, your plan for the future. But of course, it's not set in stone. It's just the moment in time. And that canvas is yours and you should develop it. And if you want to move on and go into a further business planning, that's fine, that's great. But this is just that initial step along the way. Yeah, so it's not a full business plan. It is a summary high level. Uh, so, so we can do that two hours on a telephone or Zoom. Uh, or FaceTime or whatever works for you, uh, Skype, WhatsApp. And uh, we need just a couple of hours of undistracted time. And, uh, and then we work through, I record it, and I'll get the business canvas completed on your behalf, send it to you, and then that's, that's the job done. After that, it's really entirely up to you about uh, where you take that and how you move. And, and the good thing about the ECI is that you can then reach out and arrange for an on-site visit uh, to one of the communities, and you've got a kind of a, 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 that, that far end uh, opportunity to reach out and link up with the ECI folks, which I think is important because the point where you leave and go offshore is one very stressful. So you need to kind of know what's going to come up and ECI will be able to give you way more information about what you can expect at the far end. A, a visit offshore beforehand as part of that is, is pretty key. Um, so I think th this slide really kind of sums up what I'm uh, saying here. And so if you could move today and still make enough to live on, would you be interested? Question. You know, if you're retiring offshore requires supplemental, is this the right move for you? And if like me and retirement is really my third act, because there really is no such thing as retirement, it's just working in a different way, then, um, uh, what are you going to do and what are the hours you're going to want to work and and how are you going to make that uh, get to that point where you can enjoy some stress-free fun in the sun and if that interests you then this is why you're on the the, the webinar today and uh, so i think that kind of brings me much to the end of this uh, part of what i did is i thought about this over the last couple of months i actually wrote down my thoughts and the reasons for why i want to move offshore and put it packaged it into a short book called making the most of the third act and um, we're, we're kind of going to be prepared just just send that to you if you're interested it will take you through uh, an even earlier baseline from what I've touched on today. It's more about your thoughts and where you're at on your journey and how to actually get you to consider the, uh, the, the implications and why moving is right for you, where do you want to move to, and some of the things to consider. So it's very much supportive of what I've said. Um, so feel free on that. Uh, and uh, I hope you enjoy the, uh, the information in the book. Okay, so I'm done. I'll stop sharing, Rachel. All righty, perfect. And I'm going to get mine caught up to where we just were here. Um, and that's awesome. Thank you so much for that, Glenn. And if anybody 
would like to get that book that Glenn mentioned, or if they would like to um, speak to Glenn, expertplanner at ecidevelopment.com, expertplanner at ecidevelopment.com is a great way to reach him. And that way we also make sure you're get, he's getting your email and we can make it easy for, uh, for everybody. All right, I'm gonna share my screen here. Um, the next one we're going to, that, thank you, Glenn, that was awesome. I think you really covered a lot of the, the information that people would like to know about, you know, what the next steps look like. And I think, you know, many of us really need that sort of hand in, in understanding that next step. We have this idea, we have a concept, or we might just simply not know what to do next, but know that we would like to live overseas. So in addition to um, Glenn, we're going to introduce you to Pete Cisco. Um, Pete is a, another digital um, strategist and he did a, a recording for us. So you're gonna just let me know if you can hear it, um, but he's gonna cover a little bit more about his services as well. And, uh, and then you have the opportunity to reach out to Pete as well. And I'm Pete Cisco from can Safety you Net. everyone hear it? Just type into the control panel. Thanks for inviting me to participate in this webinar. If you want help creating online income so you can be an expat, it seems to me you'd want to find a person with three qualifications and abilities. One, find a person who totally relies on online income he built himself. And ideally, don't no, I'm saying no. Yes, it's too quiet. It would also be best if he's done it with more than one online business model. Two, make sure that same person uses his online income to actually live as an expat Perfect. and knows those special challenges, like working from an island with frequent power failures or from hotel rooms eight time zones away from your customers. Three, see if that person will actually help you privately, one-on-one, -on -one, every step in the journey from zero to cash flow. Getting all three of those simultaneously and at an affordable cost would almost be too good to hope for. So let me very quickly tell you my story. I'm in my early 60s and I've been an expat since my 20s, but it was about 25 years ago when things took an important turn. Way back in 1996, I created my first website and it's still profitable today, along with some others that my wife and I operate. Here's an internet archive image from 1997. I made this website only to tell people about a couple of books I had written. Soon, a new company called Amazon had a commission plan, and that led to me getting an affiliate check for $300. And that $300 sent my life in a different direction, and I'm very glad it did. In 2001, I created an ebook at a time when people barely knew the word. That single ebook went on to make me over $2 million, and I still sell it and others today. In the ensuing years, I learned how to do affiliate marketing of related products, my own affiliate program to scale up my business, making membership sites with monthly rebillings, creating and selling more of my own e-products, selling physical products, and performing coaching and consulting. I've been doing all of this for over 20 years and made several million dollars in that time. I want you to know that because it satisfies qualification number one. Learn from a person who lives from online income he built himself. I started devoting myself to online business when we lived in Idaho. Soon we were able to support a family of eight entirely from online income, and we lived well. When our kids moved out, five of six of them became expats on their own, and Connie and I began traveling the world for 15 years. We've spent time living on four continents, one of our favorite places is Belize. We did several years spending four to six months per year in San Pedro on Ambergris Key. In fact, I did the paperwork to become a legal permanent resident. Now I qualify for Belize citizenship. I also acquired citizenship and a passport from the UK. That one was easy because it was under the ancestry rules. Today I'm talking to you from Ireland where we're deliberately staying long enough to qualify for citizenship here. And this satisfies qualification two. Get help from a person who lives as a digital expat and knows the challenges. As we met people while traveling, we heard one comment over and over. I'd really love to travel more and to live in a dream location, but if I move to Timbuktu, how do I make all the money I need? My answer? Do what I did. Start an online business and build it up on the side until it's reliably generating all the income you need month after month like clockwork. 
So we started a business doing that. Today, I help people who want the freedom, independence, and lifestyle flexibility that online income delivers. I work one-on-one -on -one with clients to help them decide what type of business they are suited to and that would satisfy their goals. We examine the proven business models and discuss the true pros and cons. You get answers regarding your specific situation, your specific goals, and the specific issues that arise from your business. I can help you every step of the way, whether you're starting from scratch or adapting an existing business or profession, which satisfies qualification number three. Learn from a person who will actually help you privately one-on-one. -on -one. Visit our website, join our mailing list, and send me an email. Later this week, you and I could be talking on the phone. Try finding all of that anywhere else. Thanks for watching. Fantastic. Well, uh, that was a great one from Pete as well. And if anybody would like to get in, Pete, in touch with Pete, let us know. We're happy to do a direct introduction to him. Um, you also have Glenn here who's going to be doing Q&A with us. So if you have any oh, questions, oops, sorry, feel free to type that into the control panel. All right. So next we are going to uh, jump into the country a little bit more specifically with the countries. And I just realized I wasn't showing the video, but it's going to be jumping over to Ali Rodriguez now. She's going to be telling us more about Belize. As she mentioned, Belize is where she currently calls home, originally from Texas. I don't want to steal all of her thunder, um, but Ali, why don't you uh, jump into Belize and why Belize may be a good place for people who are looking to become digital nomads? Absolutely, Rachel. Thank you. So um, like Rachel mentioned, I am originally from Texas, um, San Antonio to be specific. Um, and upon moving here, kind of the, the running joke uh, with my friends and my family was, oh, you're moving to Blues. Uh, that's by France, right? And, and there, sometimes you just really don't know where these hidden gems are located. So um, upon, upon leaving Texas and landing in Belize, there were many reasons why uh, my husband and I chose to stay and become permanent residents. And we'll kind of walk through those fairly quickly here because I know we are <laughs> running short on time and we have some other great content to cover. So, um, so some quick, oh, little double click there. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, some quick facts about Belize. So Belize is quite small. Think about uh, the size of uh, New Jersey, in fact, quite small. Um, it has a very small population density, uh, if not the lowest in, in the Central American region. So um, you can see there it's located just south of the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. Um, we are bordered by Guatemala on two sides and then right below us is, uh, I just <laughs> blank, what is yeah, right below us? <laughs> Sorry, I got to reading and then I, I uh, lost my train of thought. So it's, it's right there where you can see located very close in proximity to Panama and, and Nicaragua, which we will talk about later on here in the presentation. Um, as well as being located to these other ECI properties and countries, it is super, super close to North America, um, which some of you are joining us from, and you know that that makes a difference when you're planning on, you know, leaving your home and leaving your family, um, that how quickly can I get back if I need to? And this is one of the one of the biggest reasons that um, Belize really felt natural and, and comfortable to us is that within you know, two and a half to three hours, we could be back um, it, it, home in San Antonio. So um, there are flights that, that uh, you'll see here on the next slide from different points within the United States and Canada. Uh, that can be accessed and, and as Belize has grown in popularity for both vacation and retirement destinations, so has the flight schedules and, and the amount of flights that are being offered from these different locations uh, from the United States and within the region as well. So it's familiar yet exotic. Um, I, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I definitely have the Texas accent that's strong and, and tends to come out fairly regularly. Um, I'm very comfortable speaking English. I took many years of Spanish, but 
didn't quite stick <laughs> as, as much as I would like it to, but English is the first language here in Belize. And as a common law country, uh, the paperwork that you would go through for residency or for your work permit are in English. The immigration officers that you would speak to and have interviews with are speaking English. And so it makes it a very comfortable and, and familiar conversation to be having with somebody so that you are really truly understanding what it is that you need and what the next steps are that you will need to take and understanding the laws and, and the outline of setting up your business or um, just interacting with the general population in Belize. So um, there, of course, we are bordered by Spanish speaking countries. So, you know, over 50% of the population here in Belize do also speak Spanish. Um, so if that's something that you're comfortable with speaking, then uh, you can always, you know, go to the uh, fruit and veggie stands that are on the side of the road and, and order your veggies in Spanish and uh, they will most likely understand you. So, um, very easy to to acclimate to the community here in Belize. Water activity. So um, Ambergris Key here in Belize is where I live and it is a an island off the coast of mainland Belize and there are activities here that are bar none to anywhere else in the world. Um, fishing of course we have ex excellent fly fishing um, sites. Diving is incredible. You can see the reef right off the island here. Um, National Geographic is, I think, was filmed like right outside the door here. Um, it's absolutely beautiful, very active uh, marine life. Um, snorkeling, kayaking, a huge movement that's happened here recently was uh, stand-up stand paddle boarding. Um, and all of these activities are easily accessible and something that you can do if you become this digital nomad is find the time during the day in the sunlight hours to be out and exploring these different activities that Belize has to offer to you. Um, and in addition to that, even though it's water activity <laughs> centered here, but we also have a lot of land activities that um, you can see up here on the screen are just some of the more well-known uh, festivals and activities that we have throughout the year. Um, Lobster Fest is a huge thing down here, as you may or may not know that the island does uh, have a huge fishing community um, and a lot of their uh, revenue is generated from the, the fisheries and, and the fishermen that are here on the island. So that's, that's a huge, exciting time to be here. That is in June. Uh, so if you have a chance to make it down for that, I highly recommend it. Um, there are people everywhere. Vendors are, are putting out their best lobster dishes. And it's just a fun and exciting time um, here on the island. But also, um, just a quick kind of note to the nod, I guess, to the mainland is there are the Mayan temples. There are cave tubing and zip lining just, you know, an hour flight away in any direction um, to these other exciting things to see and to, to experience. Um, just a quick touch on this. Um, one of the things that I didn't understand before moving here was how was I supposed to get my money? <laughs> like, how, how do I, what do I do when I need to make a large purchase or, or when I want to purchase that home or if I, when I want to build a home? How do I do that? What do I, <laughs> who do I talk to? Um, and so here's just a suggestion. Key International Bank is the only international bank headquartered here on Ambergris Key. Um, they go through a range of services um, from traditional to non-traditional. They also do um, exchanges and things in other currencies. So uh, definitely if you are looking at, at that as something that is a concern or a consideration that you may have about moving, uh, especially here to Belize, please check out their website or reach out for more information specifically on banking in Belize. There we go. Okay, so I chose, I personally um, 
chose to go the permanent residency route that you can see here on the screen, there is a retired persons program. Now with that, of course, you are not, uh, you are not allowed to work because you're retired. So um, if you're looking to come down as a digital nomad, that's probably not <laughs> the right program for you. But um, my husband and I went through the permanent residency program. We did uh, meet the requirements of living in the country for at least a year. We were able to leave for 10 year, 10 days, rather 10 days, um, to go back to the States for my dad's wedding. We came back and we stayed. Uh, we went through the work permit process. We did set up a Belize company um, working online and um, helping to market for the companies here on the island. So we did go through both of those processes um, and can speak to anybody who has questions about what that looks like or how it felt to go through that process, I'd be happy to chat with you a little bit more about, about how that works. Um, and I do right here, Rachel, uh, the next slide here is about the residency through investment. Um, yes. And you can jump in and talk about that one. But I do wanna say one thing before I throw it over to you is that I wish I had somebody uh, that could have answered these questions for me before I came here. So thank you, thank you to put, for putting this webinar together, number one, and bringing in some experts to help guide and, and help people with making those decisions. Of course, well, well thank you, Allie, and I'm excited that you are part of our team. Um, and you know, Allie obviously and her husband Juan are based in San Pedro, made the move as she mentioned, so she really is a great resource for anyone who's looking uh, to come down and you know what I realized Ali is that we didn't mention our international referral network as a mode for people to earn money while being overseas but we can always do um, a little a little introduction to that at the end because I think that is such an awesome easy way for people to help others who are looking at property overseas while earning a nice referral fee for it all right, so uh, here, our, our newest residency in Belize is more of an investor residency. So if you're looking to invest in the country, whether it's ownership of real estate or setting up a trust, uh, you can do so. It has to be a minimum of $250,000 invested. You can add dependents up to 18, or you can add a spouse. You don't need to live in the country and it can lead to citizenship. So this is great if you're planning to kind of come in and out of the country. You're not sure necessarily if you wanna live there for however long, um, like the permanent residency where you have to be there for that first year you can leave up to 14 days but this is a great residency it's really really new so you won't find much information about it online but what a lot of um, folks have done at this point is paired it up with ownership of a marriott condo and from there they will either live in there full time or they can put it in the rental program and uh and make all that work so if you are interested in this residency let us know we're happy to talk to you about it um, but it's a very, very pretty, pretty much a quick process. You invest in the property. We help you submit the application. You have some interviews. You do need to be there in person. And then you receive a temporary residency card, typically within one month. And then you renew that residency card every five years. And then after the fifth year, it becomes a permanent residency. And then you could apply for citizenship if you want. So again, really helpful. Um, if you are looking at this, the residency costs in Belize for this specifically is about 20,000 US but we can get you more specific numbers depending on the, your specific home country and how many dependents you would like to add. And you know, Belize really is the hot spot right now, especially for people who are looking at ownership of real estate. You have opportunities for appreciation. You have properties that are cash flowing. So just going back to your ultimate goals and what you want to accomplish, uh, you may find that one of these countries to talk about fits better for you, or maybe you want to spend a few months here and there, own property, earn that rental income. That's another great way own real estate and have rental income as a way to generate revenue for you. So a lot of different uh, models and methods. So here's a photo from the 80s. This is what the airstrip used to look like on Ambergris Key. Um, and it has since then become a paved tarmac. We have Tropic Air and Maya Air, two domestic air carriers that are based on the island. Very nice uh, facilities as well. Here's from 1970s at the top part of the screen. That is where the airstrip currently is. I used to that green patch there. That's where the airstrip currently is. So you can see that the town has progressed quite a bit. And what's really neat about Belize is that it is very um, eco-friendly. It is very sustainable in its building practices and methods. And for a lot of folks who care about the environment, um, I know that's important. And it tends to be a reason why people come to Belize. And here it is today. It's a really, really beautiful place. We have the reef as Ali mentioned, right off the coast here. 
um, and it's incredible. If you want more information about Belize, we did a, a full hour Belize 101 presentation. We have a Belize handbook. Email us info at ECI development, I-N-F-O at ECI development.com and we'll send you the free handbook and the 101 webinar as well. All right, Ivan, why don't you jump in here and go through Nicaragua? I know we're coming close to the hour. So why don't you give us uh, some of the top highlights of the country? Sure thing. All righty, let's start with Nicaragua here. And so when you're making this consideration, guys, if you're thinking of, of a country like Nicaragua, you, you, we highlighted some, some bullet points here for you to consider. Um, and we actually did a presentation all about Nicaragua. We called it the Discover Nicaragua um, webinar, which was done earlier in the summer. And we go very much in depth here on all of these um, considerations here about why Nicaragua might be the proper country for you. And actually it was our chief operating officer, Patrick Hebert, who did that presentation. And he has um, relevant experience in the area. He moved um, from Canada to Nicaragua, started businesses there. Um, you know, he owns real estate there. So that was a very good first-hand uh, account that we had from him. So I would highly recommend that you guys uh, watch that presentation. If you'd like, just send us an email over at info at ecidevelopment.com and we can send the recording. Uh, so let me go through some of these things here. But first of all, you know, remember, where is Nicaragua? And so Nicaragua is, is located uh, a little south from uh, Belize in Central America. America, um, a little closer over there to Panama as well, but it still has that good proximity similar to Belize to, uh, to North America. It's still very close. There are uh, several air carriers that will uh, transport you over to the country so you can enjoy and, and potentially live there. Um, so it is, it is in a very central location and very convenient as well, similar to Belize. And much like Belize, it is in an emerging market here. As Rachel pointed out earlier, you'll notice here Belize is towards the middle of this, this curve here. And Nicaragua is, is, is more towards the bottom. And what that means is you can expect to see uh, more appreciation of any real estate investment or, or uh, ownership of any property there. Those, those uh, products will see uh, appraisal in their value as the time goes on, whereas uh, countries and, and regions more towards the top of this curve, you'll, you'll see they're in a market that is already established, it is mature, and so ownership of real estate or, or, or moving over to countries like that, um, you're, you're primarily looking at areas that will provide you with cash flow. If you have a, a rental home there, uh, you know, that those markets see regular tourism, they, they see a lot of people that pass through for business, and so the rental revenue is high in those areas. Areas. Now, the considerations that we mentioned earlier about uh, Nicaragua, so one of the, the, uh, the more important things to note is that it's a very, very, very safe country, especially when you consider the, the general region. And Nicaragua um, statistically has had the lowest in, in crime rate for the region, it's, so it's a very safe uh, and secure country. Uh, and and it, online, you, you may see some, some uh, some disparaging commentary from different media outlets, but like we mentioned, from firsthand experience, we have businesses there. ECI Development has created a very strong, uh, uh, secure community at Grand Pacifica, and we have the local community there that also supports um, everything that we do. And, and a lot of them ha have spoken towards that, towards the safety um, that they feel in the country. We have a lot of expats that live within the community and they too express the same sentiment. So it is a very safe and secure country that you will feel comfortable living in. And another thing to consider is the affordability of, of home ownership there. You take a look at similar property uh, in the United States there for, for Pacific Beachfront uh, real estate, and you're looking at close to a million dollars for, for a one bedroom home there. Whereas in, in Nicaragua, you'll find something very similar for under 200,000. So the comparison and, and the contrast there is, is, is huge, right? And, and if you think about that, um, you know, a lot of times the first thing that you will wonder is, well, can I, can I even afford to move to this beautiful country? Well, yes, the answer is sometimes you, you definitely can for a lot less um, than, than what you might be thinking. So this is another uh, very important point that we want to make about Nicaragua. And then, of course, once you move there, what, what is the cost of living? Nicaragua has an extremely low cost of living, again, in comparison uh, to the region. The purchasing power of the U.S. dollar is about three to four times as much in Nicaragua 
And the average that we've, we've uh, run some estimates on is that $1,000, like we said, about between $1,000 to $1,200 uh, is enough for you to live in Nicaragua. So it is, it is definitely very affordable. It is one of the locations that a lot of the, the people that Rachel mentioned that we're, um, the, the people that we serve that are asking about moving to, the, to these different countries and working there, um, they, they are considering it for that low cost of living. Oops, did a double skip there. And then of course you have some easy residency programs as well. So the pensioner program uh, that you see there, you must be age 45 to, to qualify. Um, and you must be able to prove that you are able to receive only $600 a month from your pension in order to qualify for that residency. Now, alternatively, if you are not at age 45, but you'd still like to um, acquire the residency, there is the investor program. And so you don't, there's no age requirement for that. Uh, the minimum uh, requirement there is an investment of about $30,000 in Nicaragua. Uh, you receive a five-year residency, which is renewable, and uh, you basically are able to live and work in the country, and you're even able to run your own business in the country, which is very, very exciting, um, I know, for a lot of people who are considering uh, moving to this country. And of course, there is that amazing year-round climate. It is tropical year-round, sunny, warm weather, high 80s, low 90s year-round, uh, which is perfect. Like Glenn mentioned earlier, considering your current situation, you know, you think about the cold winters in North America, uh, you know, that does not happen down here in Central America. It's always summer year-round, which is a, a very uh, important consideration to make there. And similar to Belize, you have a ton of activities to do. Uh, there's fishing, surfing, snorkeling, uh, to name a few if you're looking uh, towards the water. And then of course, uh, towards the mainland, you have nature walks, uh, beautiful, gorgeous scenery where you can go dirt biking, hiking and exploring. Just so, so much to do when you are in Nicaragua. So I, again, when you look at these countries, you, you think about the financial aspect of it. Yes, is it affordable? Yes, you know, the cost of living is down, but also what is the, the quality of life there? And, and these countries, believe. Nicaragua, Panama just have so much to offer in the way of um, quality of life and of course the activities that you can enjoy. So as mentioned, we did record a previous uh, webinar where we went way, way more in depth about everything uh, going on in the country uh, and some details about the residency programs as well. So be sure to request a free copy of the webinar and the handbook. Uh, you can see right there is uh, info at grandpacifica.com. Alternatively, you can also request it at info at ecidevelopment.com and we'll be happy to send uh, both the recording and the handbook over to you. Uh, thank you so much, Rachel, for that time. I will go ahead and hand the reins back over to you. All right, great. And we're going to just buzz through these slides. I appreciate everybody who is still on with us. Last but not least is Panama. I know Panama is a very popular uh, location for a lot of you who are looking at relocating overseas because there are many benefits to being in this country. So I'm going to guess most of you know by now where it's located. Uh, it's considered the bridge of the Americas, bridging uh, North America to South America. Um, in addition, so Panama has been a very popular place for expats for these following reasons. One, there's a strong economy. You like knowing, we like knowing when we're investing in a country where we're living there, that it's stable, that it has a strong economy. The Panama Canal is definitely the ATM machine for the country, but also a strong banking system. I think there are over 60 international banks based there in Panama. So it tends to draw a lot of people, a lot of international people to the country. Easy Airlift Copa Airlines is hub, their primary hub is there in Panama. So you have airlines and, and flights going to North America, to Europe, down to South America, making it very easy and convenient to get to. Very diverse ge geography and then easy residency programs. And it's probably honestly one of the easiest residency programs in the world that I have found at this point. Um, one of them is the Pensionado program. For that one, you have to be um, drawing a pension and showing that you can draw a pension of $1,000 a month, cannot work in the country, you can um, obtain discounts. The one that most people tend to apply for, and whether it's digital nomads, people who want to secure plan B, have some insurance in their back pocket, 
is the Friendly Nations visa. And the Friendly Nations visa, you only have to visit one day every six years in order to maintain it. Um, a few different ways that you can obtain this residency. One of the most popular um, is through investing in a teak farm that we have. So you have that investment side of it, you get the residency, um, but there are a lot of benefits. You can open a business if you want to have a full-time business down there, you can find employment. Uh, a lot of these sort of benefits that come with that digital nomad landscape. Um, friendly Nations visa, we just talked about this a little bit, but you can live and work full time in the country. It's permanent, so you don't need to reapply. Visit one day every six years, and it can lead to citizenship. So you, like we said, you can pair it up with a TEEK um, investment option um, with your personal freedom package that gets you the residency, um, a corporation, if you want to pound them a corporation, the opening of a bank account. Some of these are requirements for that residency. And you have your most important asset protected, you. And it also gives you the flexibility of coming and going from the country. And what I know a handful of digital nomads have done, and uh, like Pete mentioned earlier, is he has residencies and citizenships all around the world. And there's no disadvantage to having residencies all over the place. That'll give you unlimited access to these countries. You can spend as much time there as you please um, and not be on that tourist visa. And you know, tourist visa is good for every now and again, but you really want to know that you have the right to be in that country for an extended period of time. If anyone's interested in the residency, we can go through that. But like we had for Belize and Nicaragua, there's the Panama Handbook and the Panama 101 presentation. If you want either of those, just email us info at ECI Development. That's the Panama Handbook and the Panama Residency, or Panama Handbook and the Panama 101 webinar. Just let us know info at ECI Development. Dot com. Um, a couple considerations. I know many of you are looking at real estate with us. We do accept cryptocurrency. Uh, we do have financing options for our property ownership, in most cases up to 80% financing, 80%. Uh, and then we also have turnkey solutions for you. So, um, you know, it's nice that we have Pete and Glenn who are there to help you digitize your business, to help you get to that level where you feel comfortable of making the, the move overseas or spending considerable amount over overseas. And pairing those two up really help you to achieve that personal freedom, help you to achieve your dreams. You know, I don't know about you, but I grew up in New York. It was cold. We had horrible winters and moving down to Belize and Latin America has been amazing. You know, I feel like I'm a, a snowbird, a retiree snowbird without retiring at this point, but it's neat to know that you do have that flexibility and the options to do so. And what we have found is that a lot of folks who are looking at becoming digital nomads or digitizing their business um, tend to be interested in reducing their carbon footprint, want to have different opportunities around the world, places to go for X period of time, rent out their homes when they're not there. And so we do have opportunities available to you if this is something that you would be interested in. We have homes at our AVA community. It's our, our um, community that's very close to the beach at Grand Pacifica starting under $100,000. Uh, we have tiny homes, little bungalows in Belize under $150,000. And on the right hand side of the screen at Freedom Village in Panama, uh, we have properties there starting under $150,000 as well. So, um, you know, I think that this is huge. Um, I see also on there one point I do want to mention is the bonus. Did you know that you can obtain a second residency through ownership of a tiny home? So that is true for uh, Ava, the Eco Village in Nicaragua and Freedom Village in Panama. And then that is true if you decide that you want to own two of the tiny homes uh, in Tess in Belize because you need to meet that $250,000 threshold. So great ways to pair it up a little bit. There are a lot of different ways to make an income overseas. You know, I think like Pete and Glenn talked about having your business set up on the side, get that figured out while you're home in your home country now, get that organized. And then when it comes time for you to make the move, you're ready to go. You have everything you need. You have that income coming in. You can go to your different properties, the trifecta of tiny homes. You can make money from the rentals. A lot of really neat ways to, uh, to, to keep it going. And if you're not interested in tiny homes, perhaps you want something a little bit larger. These are about 500 square feet. Uh, let us know and we can certainly talk to you about other options as well. And we always encourage you to join our growing internationally minded family. Uh, I know for a lot of our owners and, and clients, it's neat to be able to spend time in a place where you're able to talk to your neighbor and you know, talk about what it's like to relocate or spend time overseas. Because a lot of times you talk to your neighbor in your home country and they're like, 
why in the world would you want to leave this beautiful place of Ontario? Or why would you want to leave Miami? It's lovely here. And, you know, they don't really see the bigger picture. They don't see the picture that you see. And being able to join a community like that is so powerful in so many ways that you really don't understand until you're amongst like-minded individuals. So we always encourage you to, uh, to learn more about us, uh, meet some of your, your future owners as well. Just a recap of the tiny homes. Um, and then any questions. So I know that I apologize, guys. I know we have gone over. Um, we do like to keep them within the an hour period. But what I'm going to see here is um, Irvin. So good question, Irvin. He says, a simple question. How good is the internet in these different places? Bandwidth reliability uh, in the different ECI communities. Really great question. So in Belize and also in Nicaragua, we have fiber optics. Uh, we were actually one of the first, I think the first um, development within Nicaragua, perhaps even Central America, to have fiber optics on our property. Um, so the internet is, is good. Um, also at AVA, we have satellite internet, so there's internet there as well. Um, and then in Belize, like I mentioned, we have fiber optics. And you know what's also important for you to understand, Irvin, is that our business units are being operated out of these countries. You know, we have our full staff in our Belize offices, in our Nicaragua offices, uh, in Panama. And so we, as you, like you, would depend entirely on the internet. If we don't have internet, that means our emails are stacking up. We're not able to get on the phone with our clients. So it is very important for us, especially when we're looking at new places, to make sure that we're able to have that sort of bandwidth and reliability as well. So um, I know it's a very general question, but uh, it is strong. It is certainly doable for um, for a lot of people who are you know doing the day to day and and um, working on their their computer, uploading files, downloading files, you know, streaming Netflix. I don't know if you do that when you're working, but um, whatever it is that you want to do during your general business. So I'm not seeing other questions come in here. I think a lot of them were answered throughout the presentation. Thank you, Ivan, for getting those answered on the side. So what we're gonna do is wrap it up here. Um, I wanna say thank you to everybody for joining. If you wanna get in touch with Pete or with Glenn, email us info at ecidevelopment.com. I mean, I know we've given you a lot of email addresses. We get all of them, um, but the simplest one is info at ecidevelopment.com. We'll make sure you're connected to the right folks. And uh, Glenn, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Do you have any last minute uh, thoughts or anything you'd like to share? Uh, just that I'm on the journey and can't wait to achieve the same uh, objective as many of the uh, people on the call. Fantastic. Thank you, Glenn. Ali, Ivan, thank you as well. Everybody, we really appreciate your time. We hope you decide to become a digital nomad beside us and we are here to help you throughout that journey. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.